This tutorial will be relating the first law of thermodynamics to a chemical process. Uh, so let's define a, a few terms. So if we have our, so let's take our first law and by the end of this tutorial the goal is to relate this to the first law to a chemical reaction. Okay, so here's the first law in uh, equation form. So internal energy of the system and anytime we write a state function in this class, it's in it's it's from perspective of the system, not the surroundings. Um, so in the intern so delta E is so let's define these terms. So delta E is internal energy of the system. So what does that mean? It's the sum of for chemistry, the system for chemistry the system is always the chemical reaction or the chemical okay so it's the molecules in the system the molecules are they have um, potential energy and they have kinetic energy so what so what does that mean so potential energy of the molecules is the stress of the molecules what do I mean by stress so there's like inner molecular uh, stresses from the electrons like repelling um, the molecules like um, it's it's kind of like the the chemical bonds are like stretching and bending they're kind of like rubber bands waiting to be snapped um, so like the if you think of covalent bonds like that so it's the stress of the molecules um, it's also the intermolecular forces, like the forces acting on the outside of the molecules. So those have like potential to be snapped. And when they snap, they release energy. So think of it as like you're stretching out a rubber band really far. Okay. And then there's a, there's all this stress right here in the middle of the molecule. And then when it snaps, it releases all that energy. Okay. So, um, so that's what I mean by stress of molecules. Okay. And the chemical bonds. So there's energy stored in the chemical bonds. Um, so, um, as we see, if you have molecules that are highly ordered, for example, like fossil fuels are really long chains of hydrocarbons and there, it took a lot of work for nature to make the molecule like that. Um, so they're like, that's what I mean by highly ordered. You'll see that, um, there's a lot of potential energy stored in those bonds, lots and lots. Okay. So when you burn one, like a fossil fuel, it releases tons and tons of energy for that could be converted to usable work so potential energy that the molecule can do um, so it's highly ordered and if you increase the number of bonds then you'll get more potential energy out of it um, it's so I said it's potential energy and kinetic energy so the kinetic energy of the molecule then is all the motional energy it's the energy associated with motion so um, if so let's say we have a molecule it looks like this so it has um, this molecule can um, this molecule can spin okay around its own axis so this is called translational energy Um, and it's it's this plus any rotational energy that the molecule can do. So rotational is when the actual molecule itself is spinning. So this is rotational. Energy. Um, and Q we've been working with already. Okay, so we should know what Q is, and we we're, we've worked with W as well. So Q is the heat flow. Okay, so when heat goes into the system, it's positive, and when heat goes out of the system, when the system is uh, giving off heat, this value will be negative. Um, and work is we associate in chemistry with uh, we call it PV work. Um, so any work the system does is the pressure times the volume that the system is doing. It's actually a, um, a change in volume. And this negative sign is to put it in perspective of the system. 
Okay, so uh, if the system is doing work, um, it get, uh, giving off work, um, we put this negative sign there um, to turn the number into a, a positive value. Um, so this is always, so that, that negative sign means it's always external. Um, and then this delta V is change in volume by or onto the system. Okay, one, one important note here, which makes this all a lot of this possible, is in chemistry, this is something to keep in mind as we go forward. In chemistry, um, reactions, which I'll abbreviate RxN, usually happen um, at a constant pressure. Um, and also delta V is uh, a lot of times negligible. Um, unless you have like a contained explosion, for example, like in a car cylinder, um, then it's uh, usually negligible, the, the amount of work. Um, but this is something you'd be interested in if you were like a mechanical engineer. So how to contain a chemical explosion and then make it do work like in a car cylinder. Um, so, and I'll put most of the time because um, reactions often occur in an uh, open environment. where it's not happening inside a container. Okay, so um, so let's, I'm gonna run like a, a quick proof here. So how Q is approximately equal to delta E um, and, and something called delta H. So chemists, what they have come up with is kind of like their own term and we call it delta H or enthalpy or enthalpy change. So, um, it's it's kind of like it's basically Q as applied to a chemical reaction, specifically a chemical reaction or a uh, physical process like dissolving or bo um, melting or boiling, okay, or the reverse processes condensing and freezing. So so enthalpy is the heat associated with those processes. So um, I'll, I'll write that out right here. So from the first law. And we'll see how this is connected. We're, I'm going to try to connect this idea with uh, delta E and Q. So from the first law, we have the following. Delta E equals Q plus W. Uh, solving for Q. we have the following Q equals Delta E minus W. Um, now we have a term for W. We have a term for W. W is equal to, um, so substituting, I'll write that right here, substituting um, negative P Delta V for W, we get the following Q equals Delta E plus Delta P V. Uh, actually, got that wrong. So, uh, get plus P Delta V. Okay. Um, now here we tie in enthalpy. So from the definition of enthalpy. which is the which is the chemist description uh, 
of heat exchange in a chemical process or reaction then we have the following delta H equals um, the it's the internal energy of the system plus any PV work it does any change in pressure and any change in volume that it does okay that that change in is because there could be a change in pressure and a change in volume so it's distributed between the two terms so um, now here we make an assumption which allows this to be possible at constant pressure which usually happens so at constant P which is usually true um, we get the following our enthalpy definition becomes this E plus P delta V notice the uh, the change in is not applied to um, pressure because we're assuming it the, our reaction or process is happening at constant pressure so now we have I wrote something a little wrong here okay so now we have um, these two terms are actually equal to the same exact thing so we have this and this okay so now we can finally um, we could set these two equal to each other so we we say delta H equals Q and then you'll see a lot of times in textbooks they put a little P there and the P means that um, it's this process is it happening at constant pressure uh, and oh lastly most importantly um, Q also equals we have an equation for Q so Q actually equals MC Delta T Okay, and what this lets us do, this is a really powerful result here. What's this, what this lets us do, so in conclusion, this allows us to um, use calorimetry to solve for um, heats of reaction. So which which is a uh, enthalpy um, of reactions, okay, which is the t focus of our the next following tutorials.